By now, it's been a year since we started our Agents as a Service subscription. We worked with over 50 companies and we spotted some myths that whole business owners believe about AI agents that are costing them big time and money and even completely derailing their AI projects. So in this video, we're going to bust all of them down, starting with the first one. I can solve any problem with an AI agent. So I'm sorry to break it down to you, but unfortunately you cannot solve any problem with an AI agent. Right now, in order to automate a specific process or solve a problem in a business, you have essentially three options. The first one is to build an AI automation. The second one is to build an AI agent. And the third one is to build an AI system. So in order to automate any process, you need to first understand which of these options is the most suitable for that specific process. So let me break down each one of them and then I'll explain how to select each one. So the first one, AI automation, is essentially a workflow that just executes the same way every single time. Sometimes inside an AI automation, you can have an AI agent that performs like a more dynamic task with a predefined prompt. But the core idea with AI automations is that AI automations execute in the same way every single time and there is no follow up required. With an AI agent, on the other hand, typically you don't execute the process the same way, or at least you will always follow up with an agent to improve the result. So with an AI agent, typically you don't just execute a task and then use it as it is. With an AI agent, you typically go back and forth until the result is fully satisfactory to your requirements. I, for example, just created an agent that helps me to generate new titles for my YouTube videos. And with this specific task, typically there's always some form of uh, back and forth between me and the agent, because this task is a lot more dynamic. Like with this specific task, there's not like a single answer that's 100% correct. You need to be able to iterate with an agent until the agent provides the result that fully satisfies your needs. And with AI systems, there are simply more components involved. So AI systems are essentially just more comprehensive solutions that can include both AI agents and AI automations, but also they can include things like dashboards, front ends, CI CD pipelines, data processing pipelines, and more. So AI systems are essentially more comprehensive solutions that don't just automate a specific process. They can automate almost like an entire business or a department within that business. So again, what this all comes down to is the amount of autonomy in your process. Essentially, if the process is predefined, like for example, we often do encounter clients who want to automate processes that have been executed in the same way for decades and no one is ever going to change them or execute them in any other way. In this case, you need an AI automation. If the process is more dynamic, then it's an AI agent. And if you're selling an AI solution that can work completely by itself, then this is an AI system. So when it comes down to actually automating a specific process, remember that you need to select the proper way to do this because otherwise you risk spending either way too much time or your automation is simply never going to be reliable enough. Which brings us to the next myth, which is I can build a new business with AI agents. So oftentimes some clients come to us and they don't even have an established business, but they still want to have an AI agent working in that business. And in my opinion, this just makes no sense because in order to automate something with an AI agent, you first need to have a process or a business to automate. And when it comes to automation, it's important to understand that all automation costs money. Every single time you automate something, you invest some time and money into the automation itself, which means that if you don't have an established process to automate, you're going to be risking investing money into something that simply does not work. Like, for example, we worked with a client from e-commerce and their processes were way too scattered. They weren't established enough because the process was relatively new. So when we built an agent for that process, it obviously did not provide much value. Not because the agent wasn't successful in automating this process, but simply because the process didn't provide value by itself. So when it comes to actually building a business in 2025, the most important thing is clear documentation. 
What I actually recommend is you hire some people first to perform that process for some time until it's fully established and only then you automate it with AI. Which brings us to the next myth, which is I know exactly which agents and tools I need. So I host weekly Q and A's in our community and often people come to me and they ask me how many tools or agents do I need for my specific project? And unfortunately, I cannot answer that question because the only way to know that is to test it. You see, when I was getting started in AI, I started from playing data science competitions on a platform called Kaggle. So in these competitions, initially I thought that the only way to know which model is going to perform the best is to actually study all of the possible architectures of these models. But unfortunately, this is not the case. It's not the team that has the most knowledge that wins, but the team that tests the most solutions. Because in AI, unfortunately, this is the only way to know which model is going to perform the best. It's setting up clear benchmarks and then measuring as many possible solutions as possible on these benchmarks. And the same applies to AI agents, because AI agents are also first AI models. So if you want to know how many tools and agents you need, you need to actually test this. You need to test all of the possible architectures and see which one works best. Otherwise, if you're not curious enough, you risk being stuck in a local maxima and actually never reaching the full potential of your AI agentic system. Which brings us to the next myth, which is I have to build everything from scratch. So what I also often see in companies is that they're trying to build everything from scratch. They're building their own frameworks, they're building completely custom tools, they're not using anything but just the plain OpenAI or Claude SDK and nothing else. So in my opinion, this is not the best way to do this because honestly, most of the agentic projects that you create today are not even going to require any coding whatsoever. As I showed in my last video, what you can do is you can simply take MCP servers that standardize how we create tools for agents and then simply plug them in into your systems. And that's it. And only then, if you want to reach that 90 to 100% performance on a specific task, then you can use something custom. But I definitely do not recommend you start building everything from scratch because this is not what matters. What matters is getting solution out as fast as possible and then iterating based on real experience and feedback, not some synthetic data or hypothetical examples. Which brings us to the next myth, which is I need to use fine tuning to improve my AI agents. What I also often see in our community is that people think that they can improve the performance of an agentic system using fine tuning. And in 99% of cases, this is actually not true because fine tuning is only useful if you want to transfer the style of writing of your agent, not if you actually want to improve its performance. For example, if you have an agent that writes blog posts and if you want to tailor those blog posts closer to your own blog posts that you have written before, then fine tuning can be helpful. But if you're building a truly agentic system where agents execute certain tasks and where the style of writing does not matter as much as the results or what the agent actually did, then fine tuning is pretty much useless here. Which brings us to the next myth, which is Rack is dead in 2025. As we all heard, the context windows of these models are getting absolutely massive. Like Gemini recently released a model that has 10 millions of tokens in their context window. This essentially means that you can put in pretty much all documentation of your company in a single model, which is why people started to say that Rack is basically dead. However, in my opinion, and in Jason Leo's opinion, who I recently interviewed on this channel, this is not the case. You see, even if you can put all of the documents in a single prompt, it doesn't mean that this is the right way to do this. Just like humans get distracted by extra information, agents can also get distracted as well. So the first reason why Rack is still not dead is accuracy. Because the more relevant the context that you can put into your agent, the better it's going to perform. And the second reason is token costs. You see, during inference, the transformer time complexity scales linearly with context length. 
So just like today we have RAMs that actually store terabytes of data, we still read and write from disks because it's not cost effective to do otherwise. So in my opinion, Rack is definitely not that. It's one of the best techniques actually for AI agents and it can provide a ton of value even by itself. Which brings us to the next myth, which is I need to wait until AI matures for my use case. So I also recently talked to Marco Kramer on this channel who actually just sold a company at just 20 years old. And one of the key takeaways from that podcast is that when you're building an agent, a system or a product, you have to be on the edge of the current AI capabilities. The reason he was able to sell this product in just 12 months is because when he started building that, that solution was pretty much impossible. So by the time that Claude 3.5 came out, instantly all of the bugs and errors in his system completely disappeared. It only takes you one line of code to change the model of the underlying system. So why would you wait until those models become more powerful when today you can pretty much automate any process out there, even with the current AI models. And then if the new model comes out again, all you do is you just change one line of code and instantly your system becomes way more powerful than before. Which brings us to the next myth, which is general purpose AI agents outperform niche AI agents. Today, there is a debate going on on whether one or the other is going to take us to AGI, you know, whether we're going to have like a thousand of niche AI agents performing different tasks, or if we're going to have like a super general AI agent that can perform pretty much any task. So in my opinion, the niche AI agents are more powerful than the general AI agents. So for example, we had a client in an investment niche who wanted to create like one general AI agent that would automate all of the tenders with their own clients on their side. And we built that agent for them, but our testing demonstrated that it was actually necessary to provide specific instructions for each potential client because they all had different methods and procedures that had huge influence over the final outcome. And although maybe we will have more powerful models in the future, I do still think that multi-agent systems and niche agents will prevail because modularity has always been one of the best practices in software. And AI models are also fundamentally just software. Which brings us to the next myth, which is research papers and benchmarks reveal the truth. So what I also often see business owners and developers do is they look at the recent research papers and they think that the research papers show them how things are actually going to work in practice. And unfortunately, most of the time, these research papers are based on synthetic or unrealistic data or on data sets that are not really what you're going to encounter in a real project. Additionally, the results in these papers are often skewed and are not reproducible, which has also been shown in other studies. So to give you a concrete example, a company that you all might know called Sakana AI, which is a company in Tokyo with over 1 billion valuation that released such papers as the AI scientist and the Darwin Golden machine also released another paper, which was called AI CUDA engineer. In this paper, they showed how AI agents can generate CUDA kernels, which is a very difficult task. And and claimed that the generated kernels were 100x faster. But it was quickly then debunked by an OpenAI engineer, Lucas Bayer, who actually showed that Sakana's optimized kernels were in fact 3x slower, not 150x faster as they claimed. And for some reason, no one actually even remembers this. And as soon as they released the next paper, which is the Darwin Golden Machine, they didn't even release the code. So we don't even have any way to check this. And so when it comes to actually building agents, make sure that you test all of the different approaches yourself and make sure that you're not just relying on research papers and benchmarks because they no longer reflect the performance of these models on actual tasks. Which brings us to the next myth, which is I can replace half of my staff with AI agents tomorrow. So this is one of the most common myths when it comes to AI agents. People come to us and they think that by integrating AI agents into their businesses, they can stop hiring people and completely outsource everything to AI within the next few months. 
And unfortunately, this is also not the case. Right now, there is not a chance that you can achieve the highest level of performance on every single task within the next few months. So in order for you to actually automate an entire business with AI, it takes time. It takes a lot of time to onboard employees on the agents to actually teach them how you can use agents in order to automate processes. It takes a lot of time to actually integrate agents and build out the most important solutions. What you can do, however, is focus on the most ROI intensive solutions first, which means that you will automate a significant portion of your business in a very short time. And then typically, you know, the last 20% is going to take much longer. So when clients come to us, they often have some ideas on what they want to automate. And typically what we find is that these ideas are not by far the most ROI intensive solutions that we can build for them, either because these processes are not as time consuming or expensive to execute, or because it simply will take us too long to build out this solution. So in order to understand what solution to focus on first, you need to look at the ROI focus matrix. It looks super simple. You know, you just have to focus on solutions that bring the most results and take the less effort first and then move to everything else. But you would be surprised how many clients actually want us to start from the last quadrant, which is the hardest solution to build that brings the least results. So when it comes to actually building your first solution, make sure that you don't build what the company wants you to build. Make sure that you build what the company actually needs you to build. And if you're a business owner constantly stuck in day-to-day -day operations, I'll leave a link down below, which you can check out. Of course, it's a pitch where I will show you our services. And we do hope that you will consider working with us because we believe that you can save way more time and money that you spend on our service, guaranteed. So with this, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you, and don't forget to subscribe.